Parents who have disowned or genuinely stopped loving your child, what happened? I disowned my father. I don't believe it's nearly as difficult a decision as disowning a child, but it was tough. I grew up in an upper middle class, perfect nuclear family. My parents were high school sweethearts. My dad was an operator at an oil refinery, and my mom was an accountant turned stay at home mom. I'm a middle child. I have a three year older brother and a three year younger brother. When my older brother was about 10, my dad's drinking got out of hand and became extremely physically abusive. A few years later, my mom divorced him after 23 years of marriage because she was afraid for our lives. My dad went off the deep end, started doing drugs, stealing, etc. Was involved in a few hit and runs. My older brother, who had received the brunt of the physical abuse, was manipulated into a relationship with my dad for a few years. To a lesser extent, so was I. He seemed to take an interest in us for the first time since we were little, but in hindsight, it was just more manipulation and gaslighting. We won't go into all the details, but my brothers and I eventually got wind of just what kind of sketchy stuff he was involved in. My little brother and I, who both had aspirations to get into law enforcement, cut him out of our lives completely. My older brother took a while longer. He was a kid who always just wanted his dad to love him, and so he was wearing blinders. He did eventually see the light and cut my dad out as well. A few years ago, my dad was living with his mom. My grandma had been manipulated by him for years, and they had a symbiotic, codependent relationship. She was a prescription addict, and he was an everything addict. My grandma had a reverse mortgage on her home. She was diagnosed with with lung cancer and given six months to live and moved into a nursing home. My dad kept squatting at her house despite the bank coming to rightfully claim the home. Cops got involved and he was arrested. My grandma slipped and fell two days after moving into the nursing home. She developed a brain bleed and died a few days later. My dad had a seizure his first night in jail and was brought to the hospital, where it was determined he had a burst brain aneurysm. The doctors theorized that the aneurysm was a result of his drug use, and when he was scuffing with the cops during the arrest, his increased blood pressure and or jarring caused it to burst. Now he's in a nursing home, and functioning at about a six-year-old's level. He has some inkling that he's messed up royally and it is all his fault, but he doesn't understand the specifics. He can kind of communicate and holds conversations, but they're bizarre and wander all over and a lot of very strange words make their way in. I visit him a few times per year. I only do it because the person he became with addiction is dead. I believe that karma caught up to him and he's earned his hell. I truly would not shed a tear if he dropped dead tomorrow. He's been dead to me for a decade. I do have some compassion for a sad, confused 58-year-old man who's in a depressing nursing home and doesn't understand why he has no visitors. He knows he has kids and a wife. He doesn't understand they're divorced. And sometimes he even knows he has grandkids he's never been allowed to meet. So he doesn't understand why nobody visits him. I've started occasional visits not because I have any interest in having a relationship with him, but because unfortunately the doctor saved him when his aneurysm burst, and we're left with a person who's paying for crimes he doesn't know he committed in a world he doesn't understand. He sometimes cries when he asks to see pictures of that little boy, my nephew, his grandson, and I have to explain yet again why he isn't allowed to meet him. He asks me questions about that cop, my little brother, whose name he can't remember. He looks so proud when I tell him that his son is rising through the ranks and just became a canine officer. It's like a shard of the dad he was 25 years ago has surfaced, and everything in between only exists as a convoluted fever dream. It tears my heart open as a human to see his suffering, but in a really twisted, sick way, it gives me satisfaction that his actions caught up to him, which makes me hate myself even more than I already did. I doubt anyone has read this. It wasn't supposed to be a novel, but that's how I disowned my dad, then kind of developed a minimal relationship with the ghost of his former humanity that now occupies his body. My heart goes out to people who have had to disown a child. I was extremely fortunate to have an incredible mom and extended family to support my brothers and me, yet I'm still damaged from my time with him. Having to choose between compassion and love for a flawed person and your own or your other loved one's physical and mental well-being rips something open inside of you and leaves you permanently scarred. I read it, and it moved me deeply. You're an excellent writer, and I encourage you to keep sharing your words. Thank you, and I wish you and your family the best. My mother disowned me and my sister. She was a mentally ill, abusive alcoholic. She tormented us. I bore the brunt of it as I got older in an attempt to shield my sister. I was abused in every way a child can be. Mentally, emotionally, physically, and sexually. My boyfriend helped me get out. Well, forced my hand in leaving, and I'm so thankful for that. I'll never forget watching my sister get smaller in my rearview mirror, bawling her eyes out. That was one of the hardest moments of my life. I was leaving her there with my mother. We had tried getting help before, but my mother was a massive 
Master Manipulator. One day, after beating the tar out of me and ripping my hair out, we had gone with my sister's grandmother to the police, and me and my sister were berated and treated like criminals, told we were ungrateful, spoiled brats. I didn't think calling CPS would help. A year later, my sister's grandmother and father begged me to help my sister. She was suicidal and miserable. They needed me to make some statements and talk to CPS. I was already low contact with my mother, but knew this would have serious consequences. I didn't care. I loved my sister more than anything. It was awful and we were both disowned by my mother and most of her side of our family. It ended up being the best thing to happen to me. Me and my sister were both diagnosed with CPTSD and are trying to heal. I struggled with alcoholism myself and am almost two years sober. I'm happy with my life and where I am and know that what I've been through has made me so, so strong. My sister is struggling with substances herself right now and all I can do is pray and be there for her. I hope she can heal but she's so very angry right now which I get because I've been there. I hope she'll snap out of it like I did. I'm not a parent. I've never disowned a child. My parents disowned my oldest sister. I'm the youngest of three girls. My oldest sister had a horrible relationship with my father. Blames me for getting in the way of their relationship. She had her first baby to spite him when she was 16 years old. My father refused to give her any money because she met a deadbeat child predator and got pregnant again and again and again. She constantly put herself and deadbeat before the kids. Dad would send money to girls for Christmas and birthdays and never heard a thing. He finally gave up. She's 30, has six daughters, and lives in a mobile home in North Carolina. We hadn't seen or heard from my sister until June of this year. My oldest niece contacted me asking to come to Florida, where I live, for the summer to get her and her sisters out of the trailer. I agree, contact sister and she agrees. I set up plane tickets and organized the rooms they'll stay in. When they got here, they were completely disheveled, clothes visibly dirty, smelled foul, so covered in lice that my white towels stained gray from removing them. My niece informed me that they had been without water and electricity for six months. They live in a two-bedroom mobile home. There are holes in the roof, bugs and rats everywhere. As a family, we decide the girls aren't going back to North Carolina. We tell my sister to come to my parents' house in Florida to get her life together and get back on her feet. She refused because Deadbeat is not invited. Ironically, she found out that Deadbeat is cheating on her. She confronts him and he kicks her out of their crap hole trailer. Deadbeat said, I would rather be homeless than live with you. Sister now works for the dollar store and doesn't pull her weight with kids. At least the girls are safe now. Edit, I never really finished my point with the story. My parents had disowned my oldest sister when she moved to North Carolina with Deadbeat for six years until my niece reached out to me through Facebook. I had never even met my two youngest nieces until this event. I regret turning my back on my sister. I really hate her and what she's put her babies through, but if we stayed in her life for those six years, we maybe could have prevented this. I took custody of a four and a two year old the week my son was born because my sister's a heroin junkie. Much respect to you and your family. My siblings and I have stopped interacting with my oldest brother. We found out that years earlier he had molested at least two boys. He was an adult at the time. He showed no remorse and turned the story around to say that those boys were at fault. It was so disgusting to watch someone you grew up with treat people so poorly and show such a blatant disregard for others. The good news is that the remaining four siblings have become closer and we are now able to appreciate the good we see in each other. It's true when they say if you could pick your family, it would look much different than it is. My parents disowned my oldest sister. She always struggled growing up more than us. She became a teen mom with a bad older dude, partied a lot, etc. But my parents helped her a lot. They do okay for themselves, but had a no co-signing rule for all six of my siblings and I. Still, they co-signed for her house so she could get a head start. She didn't pay the mortgage for almost three years before my mom got served in front of all the other nurses at her work. My parents worked tirelessly to try to work out deals where my sister and her family kept the house and got some leniency, but to no avail because my sister never showed up for court dates. During this time, she paid 12k for IFE and got pregnant with her fifth kid. When my mom demanded some of the money back, she accused my dad and my brother of beating her sons when my parents took them to Disney World. He didn't, and said she'd file a police report if he asked for money again. They kept asking since it wasn't true. She awkwardly joined us for Christmas and punched my brother in the face during the meal for humiliating her oldest son by asking him if he wanted to work in my brother's company for good pay. Her oldest son is in and out of jail and my brother was trying to help him after his release, but her son said he didn't want a job and got mad. She then called the cops and told them the same brother had illegal guns in his truck and they came on Christmas night and searched his truck. No guns found. Needless to say, she is not welcome anywhere near any of us and my mom still cries about it, but refuses to talk to her again. My heart actually aches for your mom. I hope she got more than just disownment.
My mother and her sister were both adopted into a great family. Recently, my grandfather fell ill and we were told to prepare to say goodbye. So the family gathered. My grandmother has had a hard time with her memory since she had a brain hemorrhage, but she welcomed my aunt into her home during this tough time. Whilst my grandfather was in his final week, Wendy, the aunt, took my grandmother's ATM card and proceeded to spend well over $1,000 on herself and get herself a motel room. She also attempted to steal their car. When my uncles found out, she basically disappeared into the wind. After my grandfather passed and his funeral was all sorted, my grandmother went to an attorney to write Wendy out of any inheritance she would get from their estate when she passes. She didn't press any formal charges because the whole process would have been lengthy and more painful for her. She didn't need the extra stress. I'm pretty sure one of my uncles also threatened Wendy to make sure she stayed away from my grandmother mother from now on too. It seems extra appalling when it happens during a difficult time for the family, but it seems also like these kinds of people wait to strike in these high-stress situations. While most of the family were burying my husband's grandmother, his cousin broke into her house and stole her checkbook. Meanwhile, on my side of the family, my cousin ransacked her mother's jewelry and tried to break into a safe in the house while said aunt was in the hospital on her deathbed. Honestly, how do these people live with themselves? I love my son, but he abused me. When he turned that violence onto his sister by choking her, I had to say goodbye. Me too. I caught him when he lunged for her, routinely attacked us. He went to his mom's where he attacked his new stepfather until the stepdad left. My son and I don't speak. You did the right thing. I wish my parents had been as brave as you. Thank you for protecting your daughter. My ex-wife disowned my son. We both married young when I was in the military. High school sweethearts. She became pregnant six months into our marriage. I don't think she connected with him at all after he was born. The most she did with him was Instagram photo shoots where she painted herself as number one mommy. When he turned three, I left the military. A year after that, she ran for the hills. I remember it like it was yesterday. I sat down with her at a local restaurant to talk divorce plans. We split all of our financials and material items down the middle. We finally got to custody for my kiddo, something I dreaded to discuss because fathers never gain custody in my area and she tells me I want absolutely no responsibility. I was taken aback and I asked if she was sure. She was. That one sentence hurt me more than anything else that had happened during that time. My biological father wanted nothing to do with me and now I was seeing it happen with my own child but with his mother. I received full custody and she married within a year afterwards. She had another child too. Her parents try their best to be a part of his life but she still does her best to avoid him. He's seven now and used to it but I know it weighs heavily on him. It just really sucks, but it's life, I guess. It's better she isn't there if she never wanted to be. He may not know that now, but he'll probably figure it out as he grows up. That's vile. Your son is lucky to have you. I'm sorry that you both have to live with this. I was raised by a single mom. It definitely messes you up a little bit at first, but you grow up and life goes on. I was bitter towards my dad, to say the least. Wondered why I wasn't ever good enough, but then you reach a point when you realize they weren't good enough for you. If she was in his life, it would probably be more damaging to him. My mom was a super mom and brought peace into my life. Gave me all the love in the world. You're the super dad and he's better off just having you. I'm 38 years old. Trust me, one super parent is enough in life. Not my kid, but my sister I raised for several years. I was a senior in high school when my parents had my sister. Completely unexpected. They were 58 and 55. I never really got to know her much as I went away to college when she was 5 months old and was in the Air Force by the time she was one and a half. I saw her twice on leave and got pics, but the way life was working out, we never really got time together. Fast forward. Our dad dies when she's two, and my stepmother's raising her. She was a terrible parent, like the kind that saw one of her kids run away at 16 to halfway across the country, another run away at 15 and get married, and one that is just a loon who spent his life bouncing around whatever hot MLM program was out there as a career. She also convinced my dad to send me to a pray away the gay camp in Tennessee when I was 15. So when my sister was 11 and begging for help, I took leave and went to her. Surprisingly, my step monster was happy to get attorneys to drop the paperwork for me to become my sister's guardian and even pay for it. So I'm raising my sister and things are okay until she's about 14. Then I caught her doing these videos online talking dirty to get guys to jerk off. So that was a mess of trying to get those down and suing the people that hired her to do them. Ran away for a week, hiding out at a friend's house, found her when she was caught shoplifting. A B&E charge at 14, trying to steal the phone of a boy she was dating to see if he was talking to other girls. It happened on base and I managed to talk it out of being a bigger thing. A second
second B&E charge with friends breaking into the NCO club to try to steal beer. I was told I had to leave base housing at that point. My security clearance was suspended to make sure she wasn't putting me in a position I could be compromised. Still 14. Arrested with stolen military ID trying to get into a bar. 15. Escapes rehab. 15. Escapes rehab again. 16. Things seem good and she's taking school seriously. At 18, she was accepted to RISD, graduated with honors, and had an actual decent paying job with a web company with benefits and everything. Started getting stoned a lot and lost her job. Sold her car to pay bills. Lost her apartment. Still hadn't bothered looking for work. Got her trust fund at 24. Blew over 400k in two years with nothing to show for it. Had multiple cases against her for drugs. Was restricted to the state but decided to go follow fish around anyway and sell molly. Got picked up for hooking and possession out of state. Was returned to Rhode Island where she was detained and somehow released pending trial yet again. While awaiting trial she was caught holding enough package for sale heroin to qualify as a distribution charge. By then, I hadn't heard from her for almost seven years, and only managed to keep up with her reading the police blotter or from the occasional attorney that she had contact me to verify that I would pick up her legal tab. I wouldn't. Against any logic, she was out of prison in under three years. I heard she dimed a bunch of people out to make it happen. She showed up at my house asking for a place to stay. I said I couldn't have her in my house, but I'd get her a place for the night and then help her locate a place of her own. That night, she broke into my house, nearly got shot by me while doing it, and tried to spin some story that she was looking for something she dropped in my house earlier that day, despite never actually entering my house. I told her she had to go. She threatened she would call DCFS and tell them I was abusing my kids if I didn't go with her to an ATM and give her all the money I could withdraw. I told her to GTFO before I exercised the castle to defense law and dropped her. Took out a restraining order the next day and in doing so found out she once again left state when she wasn't supposed to have and violated her parole. So back to the clink. Since then she's been dead to me. Wow. Just wow. That was a roller coaster of emotions.